Okay, so everyone ready? Yep. Cool. What's Please. first? Hey, uh, good afternoon. I'm excited to be able to come here at City Hall, ready for work. I'm honored and very grateful to have this opportunity to do so. You asked what's first. Well, I am uh, going to meet with top city staff uh, and uh, the city manager. I will be getting a briefing. But before that, I'm meeting with the deputy mayor to uh, ensure there's a smooth transition, to learn from her, to hear about uh, what's facing the city from her perspective, and of course, maybe pick up a batch so I could get inside. Mayor Chow, are, are you gonna be meeting with the councilors soon? Because uh, you, you're gonna have to convince a lot of them to go along with you on things they might at the moment not wanna do. Yes, I absolutely am looking forward to the opportunity to meet with different councillors and meet with all the uh, top staff. And uh, I want to start early <laughs> because I, there are a lot that needs to be done. Traditionally, um, a, a mayor just getting elected normally takes five to six weeks to um, come in and uh, do the inauguration. I didn't want to wait so long. I'm making it two weeks. So the inauguration would be on July 12th. And uh, I want to get started immediately to make life more affordable for the wonderful people of Toronto. You, you, you mentioned the deputy mayor. You talk about meeting with department heads. Just a strong mayor, you have the power to fire and hire department heads. Is there gonna be a shakeup? <laughs> Uh, I'm here to learn from the department head and to uh, find out from them, from their perspective, what are their goals, what kind of targets they're setting for the city, what would they like to accomplish in the short term and long term, and uh, what their expectation is the kind of leadership they want from the mayor's office. So I want to listen first and then also listen to the councillors. My priority has been very clear. I talked about making life more affordable and caring city hall, a, a city hall that's more caring and a safe city. And I also want to open up city hall and invite different, um, whether you are business, big, small, or um, labor, uh, or residence groups uh, or nonprofit civil society and also former candidates I want us to work together so uh, one of my first tasks is to listen and to learn and then look for ways we could work together to achieve our common goals well, have you given any thoughts about who your deputy mayor will be and um, you know John Tory came in with a group of councillors you can count on you don't necessarily have that Water into wine. Mm, I'm not sure that tastes very good, <laughs> but well, I did that last night because I didn't want to drink too much white wine. But uh, um, I think it's important that we work together. Uh, all through my political uh, career, uh, which is 30 years, I've always worked together, and I believe every city council and all the candidates really have a very clear goal. The goal is to build more housing more affordable housing. If that's the goal, let's look at how we could, uh, what kind of approaches we can take. And there, I am sure there will be common ground. And I know that there are some counselors that I might not know very well, but uh, quite a few of them I've worked with before, that I've known uh, before uh, they were even counselors, right? As to counselors too. So I've worked with them before and I would love to connect and find out from them directly what are their priorities, uh, what are they experienced so far, what kind of expectation they have from the mayor's office and let's come together and make sure council work for everyone. And I, would I 
Yeah. Doug Ford has gone from calling you an unmitigated disaster to saying he can work with you. You had nice words for the Premier last night. He said this morning he can work with you. Can you work with him? I can absolutely work with Premier Doug Ford. We love this city, as you can tell. And if that is the goal, that uh, that we want to build more housing because we've been talking about that. We know that Toronto is going to be welcoming a lot of immigrants coming to this city. And we want to make sure that there are a place for them to stay, not on the ground, not in parks. We want to make sure there is that their life is uh, be as affordable and as livable as possible in this city. So. There will be common ground. I look forward to working with Mr. Ford, Premier Ford, and his cabinet ministers, because last night, um, Minister of Housing and Municipal Affairs and I, Steve Clark and I, also have a conversation, and we said we look forward into uh, dealing with the whole issue of housing. Uh, Olivia, have you, have, Olivia, have you given any thought to who you want your deputy mayor to be and what kind of role you want that person to play in your administration? Oh gosh, uh, not on the first day. <laughs> um, you have no. said on the first day you'd like to get some yep. housing projects, specifically the ones uh, proposed by nonprofits, that seem to be kind of stuck in City Hall. You want to get the movie. Can you elaborate on that? What, what, what's the problem and what are you going to do? I do not know what is the problem. That's why I'm here to learn about what is the problem. Uh, yes, it's been stuck for a couple of years and there may be good reasons. I hope hope not. Uh, and uh, I will be working with the staff very closely to say, hey, my priority is get the shuffle in the ground now. Let's do it. And um, so let's get that done. Right? Yep. And I, I'm a firm believer that if you set goals, set targets, an action plan, I need to achieve this number of housing being built that percentage of it needs to be affordable if you set the targets and be very clear by when and let's look at then what is the action required to get to that stage and then after we get that let's then review what is the best practices what can we do to make it faster make it better make sure that it is successful and then we set another year of uh, goals and timetable. If you, if you don't have that kind of um, clear action plan, then things can slip through the cracks. Just look at Cafe TO, for example, something very small. Uh, yeah, it's just something so small that if we can't just get that done, then there's a problem. She just asked the question that you ask in Chinese, <laughs> in Cantonese. I'll answer. What's the first thing I'm going to do? Our first thing is to meet our superintendent and have a meeting with the lowest level management. So we'll see how we can get the lowest level management down, especially if we can get the lowest level management down. Oh, I am sure that if you go to ask any of the councillors that uh, do you wish to see housing built now, they will say yes. Would you like Cafe TO program be successful? Yes. Would you like to see the community centers and parks uh, serve people better? They will say yes. Well, how can we improve the service of City Hall? What can the mayor's office do? to support that goal. And once we set that, then we'll move forward together. I am convinced that that is the goal of all, all the councils. But, but the Olivia, there problem. are many other things that, that are not as popular. You, you talked about tearing down the eastern portion of the Gardener. Would you use the strong mayor powers to influence them? Or, or how soon would you like to see, you know, have those meetings with the city to start talking with the Gardener? Well, the gardener uh, is coming down anyway, whether I'm the mayor or not. Uh, th you're talking about one, well, less than one kilometer of the gardener. Since it's coming down, do you, uh, it's going to be an, uh, on the ground. Do you rebuild it in 
and do it as a um, leveled up uh, and block the uh, the waterfront? Is that a priority and spend half a billion dollars doing it? Do we not want to save some money to make sure some of the money can be used in fixing TDC, fixing potholes, any number of things? Or, and uh, also not just saving money, the 8,000 uh, units of housing that could be built in that land. Is that not a priority? So that's a building, rebuilding that upper portion of less than a kilometer of Gardner. It, it's not going to be built until 2026 anyway. So there, are, there would be time for us to get into that conversation. And, um, and when we get there, we will solve that problem when we well, meet there. Olivia, Olivia uh, you have promised that you're going to expand services. Given the fact that the city has one billion deficit, how is that possible uh, to, to, to uh, expand services? Well, uh, as you know, I have uh, talked about other source of revenue, whether it's mansion tax, which is impact on the two percent of uh, the home buyers if their house they're buying is very expensive uh, then they pay a bit more when they buy a new home that's like two percent of the hundred percent of people buying new homes it's not it's the top tier people that have a lot of money and uh, the second piece is the um, uh, vacancy tax and if land speculators want to come and buy off the building evict everybody leave it empty you know what they should pay a bit more uh, on the vacancy tax and that would generate 43 million dollars about one percent of taxes we don't really have to get to that place until next year in terms of talking about what kind of uh, taxes we we have the budget deficit that is in front of city hall is very in city that city council is very serious it's uh Mr. Tory, in last, uh, the former mayor, left the city with 7% tax increase and still $1.5 billion of deficit. How am I going to deal with it? I will have to talk to the senior staff, talk to other councillors, and see if we could persuade the federal and the provincial government to partner with us. Because at the end of the day, a a uh, healthy and livable city of Toronto means a strong Canada so and a strong Ontario so we'll we'll figure that piece out but do remember that 1.5 billion dollar is where that deficit it came from the previous administration on top of it that 7% tax increase that just been applied in the last two or three months did not come from Olivia Chow, <laughs> just becoming a mayor. It's been the previous administration. Carol Lecter, are you thinking twice about your promise not to use the strong mayor powers? I believe in democracy. The place where my mom and dad came from, Hong Kong, there are uh, democracy warriors <laughs> or, or whether they're former legislators, lawyers, priests, are all in jail because they want a right to vote for who they want and, uh, and democracy, which is 50% 50 50 plus one. Uh, so I do not want to violate the principle of democracy and because that is uh, pretty sacred. Olivia, you weren't born in Canada, and a bylaw wasn't born in Canada, Mark Saunders wasn't born in Canada, top three uh, candidates yesterday, all immigrants. I think the signal is the city government uh, wants to have a government that represent and reflect the population it's serving. It's important to ref reflect who we are representing. It's also saying to every Torontonians, doesn't matter where you came from, what is your skin color, faith, doesn't matter who you are, if you have the passion and ideas to contribute to the city please the doors open come you have that power to do so and 
that's a Toronto dream. It's, uh, it's the hope that every immigrant or every residence, no matter where you're from, you could be, I don't know how many generations of people from Ireland in the turn of century. This city um, welcomed, it's called City of York, welcomed 50,000 Irish immigrants, well, refugees, into this place when we only had 30,000 residents here in the city of York at the turn of the century. And look at the Toronto it is now. So we are, we, Toronto has been built by um, as people, successive waves of refugees and immigrants to this country. After saying that, Indigenous people have been here for a long, long time, way before any of one arrived. We need to work harder in the reconciliation and, uh, and share power with them. So that's one thing I would also honor. Olivia, you, Olivia. You said the better sorry part about a longer answer, but <laughs> can't help it. <laughs> Olivia, you've spent the better part of the last decade training the next generation of organizers through the Institute for Change leaders. So campaigns are all about organizing. Being as specific as you can, can you reflect on how this new generation of leaders that, that you trained helped you to secure you uh, the win through organizing? I'm not sure they win. The, I, the, the win is uh, about just the, the, the people I train. It, it, what is organizing is bringing people together, building strong relationship with each other. Look at what we have in common, and that strong relationship is really what power is all about. And once you have that, whether you want a crossing guard and uh, in your neighborhood so your kids are safer with a crosswalk or whether you want a traffic light or you want to see buses to come more often all of that is about organizing your neighbors your communities to make sure that city hall hear from you uh, and or queen's park or or the federal government so uh, i want to give that kind of power to people of Toronto so that they can feel, hey, City Hall is now open. We do have a say, not just election period. It's all about solving problems together. So that's what political organizing is Olympia. all about. Did you see yourself Olympia. as an organizer on council trying to get votes? Or did you <laughs> see that you have a bigger stick because you were just elected as mayor? It's, um, well, power comes from many different ways. Uh, yes, as, as a mayor, as a new mayor, I do have some say and I do have an office, I have staff, um, but I also see myself as their colleagues and so we will work together that way. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank, uh, en français? My French is not very good, I, even though I understand some. Do you want me to do one, a, one last uh, question? Sure. Yeah. You promised that you're gonna block the transfer of city lands for Ontario Place. Ah, Ontario yeah. Place, okay. Ontario Place, that's where I bring my grandkids to skip rocks, watch sunsets, and I would love to keep it public. And uh, yes, the city have series of land, uh, and some in the water also belongs to the city, and uh, that whole matter has been deferred away. We're keeping it and we'll talk to uh, Premier Ford and Infrastructure Ontario to see uh, what would be the future. I certainly believe that Ontario Place should be kept public uh, and have a beautiful park where people can come and enjoy the waterfront. Thank you so much. I'm going to go in and meet with uh, Deputy Mayor.